Hey guys, and welcome to the second video in the neural network tutorial series. Now in today's video, what we're going to be doing is actually getting our hands dirty and working with a bit of code and loading in our first data set. So we're not actually going to do anything with the model right now. We're going to do that in the next video. This video is going to be dedicated to understanding data, the importance of data, how we can scale that data, look at it and understand how that's going to affect our model when training. The most important part of machine learning, at least in my opinion, is the data. And it's also one of the hardest things to actually get done correctly. Training the model and testing the model and using it is actually very easy. And you guys will see that as we go through. But getting the right information to our model and having it in the correct form is something that is way more challenging than it may seem. With these initial data sets that we're going to work with, things are going to be very easy because the data sets are going to be given to us. But when we move on into future videos to using our own data, we're going to have to pre-process it. We're going to have to put it in its correct form. We're going to have to send it into an array. And we're going to have to make sure that the data makes sense. So we're not adding things that shouldn't be there or we're not omitting things that need to be there. So anyways, I'm just going to quickly say here that I am kind of working off of this TensorFlow 2.0 tutorial that is on uh, TensorFlow's website. Now I'm kind of going to stray from it quite a bit to be honest, but I'm just using the data sets that they have and a little bit of the code that they have here because it's a very nice introduction to machine learning and neural networks. But there's a lot of stuff in here that they don't talk about and it's not very in depth. So that's what I'm kind of going to be adding and the reason why maybe you'd want to watch my version of this as opposed to just reading this off the website because if you have no experience with neural networks it is kind of confusing some of the stuff they do here and they don't really talk about why they use certain things or whatnot so anyways the data set we're going to be working with today is what's known as the fashion mnist data set so you may have heard of the old data set which is image uh image classification but it was like digits so like you had digits from zero to nine and the neural network would classify digits. This one's a very similar principle, except we're going to be doing it with like t-shirts and pants and um, what do you call it? Like sandals and all that. So these are kind of some examples of what the images look like and we'll be showing them as well in uh, in the code. So that's enough of that. I just felt like I should tell you guys that the first thing that we're going to be doing before we can actually start working with TensorFlow is we obviously need to install it. Now, actually, maybe I'll grab the install command here so I don't have to copy it. But this is the install command for TensorFlow 2.0. So I'm just going to copy it here. Link will be in the description as well as on my website. And you can see pink pip install hyphen Q TensorFlow equals equals 2.0.0 hyphen alpha zero. Now I already have this installed, but I'm going to go ahead and hit enter anyways. And the hyphen Q, I believe just means don't give any output when you're installing. So if this runs and you don't see any output whatsoever, then you have successfully installed TensorFlow 2.0. Now I ran into an issue where I couldn't install it because I had a previous version of NumPy installed in my system. So if for some reason this doesn't work and there's something with NumPy, I would just pip uninstall NumPy and reinstall. So do pip uninstall NumPy like that. Uh, I'm obviously not going to run that. But if you did that and then you tried to reinstall TensorFlow 2.0, that should work for you and it should actually install its own version of the most updated version of NumPy. Now another thing we're going to install here is going to be matplotlib. Now matplotlib is a nice library for just graphing and showing images and different information that we'll use a lot through this series. So let's install that. I already have it installed, but go ahead and do that. And then finally, we will install pandas, which we may be using in later videos uh, in the series. So I figured we might as well install it now. So pip install pandas. And once you've done that, you should be ready to actually go here and start getting our data loaded in and looking at the data. So I'm just going to be working in subline text and uh, executing my Python files from the command line, just because this is something that will work for everyone, no matter what, but feel free to work in IDLE, feel free to work in PyCharm, as long as you understand how to set up your environment so that you have the necessary packages like TensorFlow and all of that, uh, then you should be good to go. So let's start by importing TensorFlow. So we'll import TensorFlow as TF like that. I don't know why it always short forms when I try to do this, but anyways, we're going to import, uh, or actually, sorry, from TensorFlow, we'll import Keras. Now Keras is a, an API for TensorFlow, which essentially just allows us to write less code. Uh, it does a lot of stuff for us. Like you'll see when we set up the model, we use Keras and it'll be really nice and simple. And it's just like a high level API. And that's the way that they describe it. That makes things a lot easier for people like us that aren't going to be defining our own tensors and writing our own code from scratch, essentially. Now, another thing we need to import is NumPy. So we're going to say import, if I could get this here, 
import numpy as np and finally we will import uh, matplotlib so matplotlib in this case dot pyplot as plt and this again is just going to allow us to graph some things here all right so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to get our data set loaded in so the way that we can load in our data set is using keras so to do this i'm just going to say data equals in this case keras dot data sets dot fashion underscore mnist uh, and this is just the name of the data set there's a bunch of other data sets inside of keras that we will be using in the future now whenever we have data it's very important that we split our data into testing and training data now you may have heard this uh, me talk about this in the previous machine learning tutorials i did but essentially what you want to do with any kind of machine learning algorithm especially a neural network is you don't want to pass all of your data into the network when you train it you want to pass about 90 80 percent of your data to the network to train it and then you want to test the network for accuracy and making sure that it works properly on the rest of your data that it hasn't seen yet now the reason you'd want to do this uh, and a lot of people would say well, why don't i just give all my data to the network and make it better not necessarily and that's because if you test your data on if you test your network on data it's already seen then you can't be sure that it's not just simply memorizing the data it's seen, right? For example, if you show me five images um, and then like you tell me the classes of all of them and then you show me that uh, the same image again and you say, what's the class and I get it right. Well, did I get it right because I figured out how to analyze the images properly or because I'd already seen it and I knew what it was, right? I just me memorized what it was. So that's something we wanna to try to avoid with our models. So whenever we have our data, we're gonna split it up into testing and training data, and that's what we're gonna do right here. So to do this, I'm gonna say train, uh, in this case, train underscore images, and train underscore labels, comma, in this case, test underscore images, comma, test underscore labels. And then we're going to say this is equal to data dot get underscore data. So not get data, load underscore data. Now, the reason we can do this is just because this load data method is going to return information in a way where we can kind of split it up like this. In most cases, when you're writing your own models for your own data, you're going to have to write your own arrays and for loops and load in data and do all this uh, fancy stuff. But Keras makes it nice and easy for us just by allowing us to write this line here, which will get us our training and testing data in the for of kind of variables that we need. So quickly, let me talk about what labels are now. So for this specific data set, there are 10 labels, and that means each image that we have will have a specific label assigned to it. Now, if I, I'll, actually I'll show you by just printing it out. If I print, for example, train underscore labels, and let's just print like the zeroth, uh, or I guess the first training label. So let me just run this file. So Python tutorial one, you can see that we simply get the number nine. Now, this is just what is represent like the label representation. So obviously it's not giving us a string, but let's say if I pick, for example, six uh, and I hit enter here, you can see that the label is seven. So the labels are between zero and nine. Uh, so 10 labels in total. Now, the thing is, that's not very useful to us because we don't really know what label zero is, what label nine is. So what I'm going to do is create a list that will actually define what those labels are. So. I'm going to have to copy it from here because I actually don't remember the labels, uh, but you can see it says here what they are. So for example, label zero is a t-shirt, label one is a trouser, nine is an ankle boot, and you can see what they all are. So we just need to define exactly this list here, so class names, so that we can simply take whatever value is returned to us from the model of what label it thinks it is, and then just throw that as an index to this list so we can get what label it is. All right, sweet. So that is... Um, how we're getting the data now. So now I want to show you what some of these images look like and talk about the architecture of the neural network we might use uh, in the next video. So I'm going to use PyPlot just to show you some of these images uh, and explain kind of the input and the output and all of that. So if I, if you want to show an image using matplotlib, you can do this by just doing plt.imshow and then in here simply putting the image. So for example, if I do train not labels images. And let's say we do the seventh image and then I do plt.show. If I run this now, you guys will see what this image is. So let's run this and you can see that we get, uh, this is actually, I believe like a pullover or a hoodie. Now I know it looks weird and you've got all this like 
green and purple that's just because of the way that kind of matplotlib shows these images if you want to see it properly what you do is i believe you do cmap equals in this case uh plt dot c i think it's like cm dot binary or something uh, i gotta have a look here because i forget uh yeah cm dot binary so if we do this and now we decide to display the image it should look a little bit better let's see here uh and there you go we can see now we're actually getting this like black and white kind of image now this is great and all but let me show you actually what our image looks like so like how was i just able to show like how was i just able to do this image well the reason i'm able to do that is because all of our images are actually arrays of 28 by 28 pixels so let me print one out for you here so if i do train underscore images let's do seven the same example here and print that to the screen i'll show you what the data actually looks like uh give it a second and there we go so you can see this is obviously what our data looks like and it's just a bunch of lists so one list for each row and it just has pixel values and these pixel values are simply representative of i believe like how much i don't actually know the scale that they're on but uh i think it's like an rgb value but in grayscale right so for example we have like 0 to 255 where 255 is black and 0 is white and i'm pretty sure that's how we're getting the information in someone can correct me if i'm wrong but i'm almost certain that that's how this actually works so this is great and all, but this is, these are large numbers. And remember I was saying before in the previous video, that's typically a good idea to shrink our data down so that it's with, within a certain range that is a bit smaller. So in this case, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to modify this information a little bit so that we only have each value out of one. So we, instead of having it out of 255, we have it out of one. So the way to do that is to divide every single pixel value by 255. Now, because these train images are actually stored in what's known as a NumPy array, we can simply just divide it by 255 to uh, achieve that. So we'll say train images equals train images divided by 255. And we'll do the same thing here with our test images as well. Now, obviously, we don't have to modify the labels as well. Also, because they're just between 0 and 9, and that's how the labels work. But for our images, we're going to divide those values so that it's a bit nicer. So now let me show you what it looks like. So if I go Python tutorial one dot pi, and now you can see that we're getting these decimal values and that our shirt looks well the same, but exactly like we've just shrunk down our data. So it's going to be easier to work with in the future with our model. Now that's about it. I think that I'm going to show you guys in terms of this data. Now we have our data loaded in and we're pretty much ready to go in terms of making a model. Now, if you have any questions about the data, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. But essentially, again, the way it works is we're going to have 28 by 28 pixel images and they're going to come in as an array, just as I've showed you here. So these are all the values that we're going to have. We're going to pass that to our model and then our model is going to spit out what class it thinks it is. And those classes are going to be between zero and nine. Obviously, zero is going to represent T-shirt where nine is going to represent ankle boot. And we will deal with that all in the next video. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,